Good morning, guys. Um, just ran across this a little while ago. Thought it was very interesting. Thought everybody should know about it. Please don't forget to go to Chronicles of Olivia's channel and watch this. It was an interview that she put out like 12 hours ago. The link will be down in the description, and I'm going to be saying that again here in a minute. But watch till the end, guys. Share it. Like it. Subscribe to me. Subscribe to Olivia. And listen up, because in the Idaho 4 case, the secrets are starting to emerge. They're starting to seep out of the cracks. And pretty soon, everybody's going to know the secrets that all those people have been holding in. Listen up. In this video, I'm referring to the transcript of a video that was put out by Chronicles of Olivia 12 hours ago. The link for that video will be in the description box so that you can go and check out the entire phone call that she has with a parent of another student that went to school in that area. This student claims that she received text messages or on Instagram, whatever it was, the morning of the Idaho 4 incident that proves, allegedly proves, that there was more than one person, possibly four people there that day or that morning, that night when this all happened, it claims that Bethany and Dylan were downstairs in the bedroom in downstairs. They did see all four, three or four of the people that were there. They were awake the entire time. They heard everything that went on. And the following morning, the text messages and the story of what had happened and the fact that those four were gone from us before their time were all sent out at like eight between eight and ten o'clock that morning there is tons of people that allegedly already know what happened that night the real story and the fact that brian kohlberger was not the only person there by no means am i saying he is innocent but it does tell a very creepy and horrendous story of what happened and what that the fact that there's dozens of people, students that knew from like eight o'clock that morning that these four students had been taken from us way too soon. And this is a it's a narrative that was thought of and told to everybody. And the fact that they waited the four hours, eight hours, whatever it was, before Ellie was called was because, for one, they were cleaning the house, getting rid of stuff, what we don't know. They, they evidently, they were, I'm just fabricated about this whole thing. I've, I listened to this whole video of Olivia's and this phone call from this mother. And to me, she sounds very sincere. But I do want to point out, I, from the get-go, have said there was no way that one person could have done this. And I truly, truly believed that there was no way that either one of those roommates, if they were, you know, there, could have went and seen something and then went back to bed and went to sleep. Whether it be from shock or just... I don't care kind of syndrome. The fact is, evidently, they heard what was going on. They seen the people that did this. They were awake throughout it. The next day, when the, the original story that we heard that they called people over, well, evidently, they did. Evidently, there was tons of people, some that came over and then seen what was going on. Seen, I mean, this girl, the, the mother who was talking on the phone, her daughter even knew what injuries each person had. And dozens of students also know the details of what the house looked like, what the people looked like, the students. They, they, there is way more to this story than what the police are putting out there. And what is really strange is that this mother herself, who is on the phone with Olivia, called this in on the 13th. She called LA or FBI. And she told them what she knew because she was with her daughter when her daughter started getting these text messages from my understanding of the phone call. Her daughter was relaying the, you know, what she was getting in text messages to her mother about what had happened. And this was even long before Ellie was called, before 911 was even called the first time to the King Street address. So there's actual proof out there guys there's actual people out there willing to testify that those girls were awake 
those girls seen all three or four of the perpetrators. There's way more going on out there than what we're being told, than what Ellie is telling us and why Ellie made such a strong case against just one person is beyond me. But I told you way back when, he wasn't alone. And I'll bet money it's going to come out. I'll read some of the comments or uh, part of the snippets from the uh, phone call that she had with Olivia. Okay, here's one that can be found at um, timestamp 410. It says, I've said everything to the FBI. Immediately, when I discovered a lie, I called the FBI and I told them the lie. Here's another one that's at, found at 425 uh, timestamp. It says, so out of control while 10 kids have are unalive since last, what, February? And Olivia says, 10? Here's one at timestamp 519, and it's because it's a transcript, it sort of mixes up the words that the person is saying. But anyways, it says, anything wrong, you know, I don't know. That I believe that, but it's just so weird that from, was it eight in the morning that the first phone call was made to like sorority sisters at Pi Beta? Was it, is, yeah, so from eight o'clock, till 11.58, that was literally four hours of time. That's why, right, if she was awake, like she says, that was eight hours, and she heard all of that. So with the is doing you know for sure, that is what the phone calls were about when roommates called at 8 a.m., and I think what I heard, and I'm not sure getting rid of everything in the house, they were cleaning the house, which would explain a van shoe print because I'm almost 100% sure that the guy doesn't wear vans, college students do. And of course, you know, down a couple sentences later, uh, Olivia's like, so if that was it and the time frame, it was eight hours and not four, but they conclude that the girls were not only just cleaning up the house and getting rid of stuff, but they were also coming up with the narrative of what supposedly happened. Now, this is allegedly what this woman is saying happened. It says says, uh, the timestamp 635, narrative because the narrative that was sent to my daughter at around 10 in the morning, um, it was that four students were unalived. They were five, five beta pi, and I think, the Phi group, they didn't because she's an AC, um, because I remember the girl saying that that's weird that an AC and a Pi Beta living together, and they said, well, schools were different, and I don't know, maybe one of them dropped or something, and then the woman's talking about the injuries that one of them got, and she had mistakenly said Bethany's at timestamp 712 bethany's injuries and then wait who's olivia says injuries whose injuries bethany and then the woman says i'm not uh, i don't mean bethany i'm sorry about maddie's injuries yeah and i don't know if you know their injuries or not but another thing they all knew that that's interesting uh because from what why i had heard was the kid that discovered the bodies but what you're from what you're saying from you're telling me it seems like multiple people knew about the injuries before the so-called person so that's not true then so he might have been called over to see and don't i can't imagine that hunter chapin chapin would have not immediately called 911 hart is really confused because I know there were guys there as well. So you know for sure there were other guys there. Yes. I'm sorry this is so choppy, guys. It's just hard to read. Transcript. It says um, over, over there, there were other guys there overnight. You know that there were other guys there. I thought he told me that his, that his brother, he was a triplet in that his brother was there. Hunter Chapin, yeah. He was, yeah. So he was there. And, um, I, in fact, he's the one who told his parents. Hunter Chapin's the one that told his parents about his brother's unaliving. His parents, Evan, or Ethan's parents told that on the TV, supposedly. Anyways, guys, I, 
go listen to this go watch this video you're going to find out so much so much information about this and it is so interesting i wished i could read out the whole transcript but it's it's hard and but just know that people parents are coming out and telling what they know some students are coming out and telling what they know about what happened on November the 13th about the Idaho 4. And you guys are going to be waylaid when you watch Chronicles of Olivia and the interview that she had with that mother. I'll see you on the next video.